What's going on guys? In this video we're going to break down how to perform a stroke scale. Um, but before we do any type of test, um, we want to see um, how, first off, how alert they are, so AVPU, if they are even oriented enough to perform the stroke scale, um, any residual stroke effects, so a history of strokes, what their blood sugar is, um, and you want to keep the mnemonic FAST in mind. And so FAST, it's going to break down into facial droop, arm drift, slurred speech, and time. Kind of there's two components to time. Time is of the essence. So we want to minimize our on-scene time and get um, on the way to either a primary stroke center or a comprehensive stroke center. Um, and then time as far as asking family members, a bystander, the patient if they can ask you when their last known normal was. Um, because that's important for an IV therapy, IV medication called TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. Um, there's a, a small window, depending on where you are, six to eight hours, then that could be applied. If it's been longer than six to eight hours, let's say they were last known normal the night prior and they've slept for longer than eight hours, that medication doesn't, doesn't apply. So as always, they'll follow your local protocols. Um, so the stroke scale, the one that we use is called the Cincinnati Stroke Scale. Um, Kimberly here is here to, to help me demonstrate that. Um, and so with, with facial droop, I'm going to ask Kimberly, if she isn't, if I don't notice facial drooping already, um, Kimberly, can you please smile? And when you smile, I want you to show teeth. Awesome. And so if I, if I were to notice one side drooping at that point, that's a positive for facial droop. The next criteria is arm drift. So Kimberly, can you have both arms up? And the, you want to be able to tell them, palms up. So have their palms up. Close your eyes, Kimberly. And within about 10 seconds, if their arm drifts, that's a positive sign for arm drift. The last component is slurred speech or abnormal speech. And so if they're not already you know, clearly slurring on their own, you're going to try to have them say something difficult, like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So Kimberly, can you say you can't teach an old dog new tricks? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right? And so if there was any slurring at that point, that's a positive for slurred speech. And um, do you need do you need all three of these? Nope. No, you only need you only need one of these to be positive um, for that stroke scale. And in addition to the Cincinnati stroke scale, we do want to perform a finger to nose test. And so with the finger to nose test, there are three locations to that. I'm going to have my finger out here, about two feet away from the patient, and I'm going to ask the patient, um, Kimberly, can you touch your finger to my nose? Go ahead, yeah, go ahead and do that. No, it's my nose to your finger. Sorry, your <laughs> nose to my finger. Go ahead and do that, Kimberly. Great. And then this is the first location, right in the center. Go to the right, and then go to the left. Great. And now use your left hand. Great. Great, great. And so guys, that was, those are the two tests that we would perform if they're able to. Um, the next part is, it's called the three item stroke scale. I'm not gonna go over it in the video. I'm gonna leave it all in the description below. But we would perform the three item stroke scale if the patient was unable to perform the Cincinnati stroke scale and the finger to nose test. And it pretty much incorporates three things. Level of consciousness, gaze preference, if they have a, a one-sided gaze, as well as um, motor function. So it's similar to the Cincinnati Stroke Scale, um, but we would perform this if they're unable to. Okay, it's all in the description below. I'll see you in the next video.